YouTube, got a quick one in for a Dender Jaguar. Jaguar, Jag. Um, it's a Japanese one. Um, CO number stocks Q09. Does that make it a 2009? Kind of sits to be. It's a, it's a crafted in Japan, not a made in Japan. Um, I can't remember what the significance is of that. But I remember my pal Andy's got a guitar and he was. I can't remember which is better. I think it basically just means up until a certain year they're made in Japan and then after that they're crafted. I don't know what they are just now or is it the other way around? Well, this this is newer than that and that's a made in Japan. So I think it's the same factory. It's the it's Fuji Gen again, Fender Japan, does it even say on the headstock? With synchronised floating tremolo offset contour body. Yeah. So, white guitars, got to love them. Tortoiseshell scratch plate. Pickups with the mad sort of it kind, of, it kind of looks a bit like a saw blade runs on either side, which is what Jaguars have. What difference that makes, I can't tell. Of course, the volume control doesn't work when you're in the, the, uh, the rhythm socket. Now it works. Uh, I think I've now moved my tape measure to up there so I can always find it. I think these are 24 inch scale. It is. It's, 20, it's a 24 inch scale, so it's a, a shorter. Not really going to start arguing it's a short scale, um, because like a, you know, a, a, a Fender would normally be 25 and a half inch, a Gibson would be 24 and three quarters, so this is 24, so it's, and to be honest, it's not a massive feeling difference between like a Gibson and a Fender, so it's just a wee bit smaller, but the actual guitar body is bigger, so I mean, it's actually, do I have one, can I get that one down, I'll just go through, is it actually bigger than a Strat? See, it's like, um, there you go. So, I mean, it's it, the strap looks wee, but it's a longer scale length. Um, so the, oh, I, just, I, I get a similar thing to when I play a jazz bass, which is not quite, but kind of not far off this body shape. Um, the jazz basses just feel massive um, compared to a P bass, because P basses I'm used to. So I mean, I've never, I've, I've had I've had a couple of shot sort of a couple of Jaguars. I think um, the Squire one or is it the Squire Classic Vibe? I, I remember doing work on one of them before. Um, much a similar layout. Um, this one doesn't. I don't have the tremolo arm with me. Uh, it's got a, a switch I think which turns off the tremolo arm. Uh, I had this in for repair because only the rhythm circuit worked. So. The owner, I just, I'm just talking to me, he's going to come pick up tonight, so I'm squeezing this video in just now. This is the rhythm pickup, which is the, this switch here is up the way, and on this you've got two roller volume, roller controls, one being a volume, one being a tone. So as far as the owner's concerned, this guitar has only ever had the rhythm circuit, which is one pickup, the neck pickup, and a volume and a tone, and these didn't do anything. Um... <laughs> a tone, kind of funny tone, so it's, it's a funny value, not not the usual value, and volume. I do quite like the roller controls, I'd like to see them in more guitars. Um, yep, so down here we've got, this switch is up, when this switch is down, it puts on these and we've got an on off, an on switch for this pickup, an on switch for this pickup, and a strangle switch, which is actually, it's a high pass filter, basically, it's kind of along the same lines of what I've been putting in strats when I bought a big box of, of caps by mistake, um, but I've been putting them on a knob, this is just a switch, so if we go into, so this is the first time the owner has ever heard the bridge pickup, turn the volume up first though, Both pickups. And now this is the volume control. The volume control's got a very sharp roll off. That's it down, it's at eight, and then it's completely off. I don't think the pot's burst, I think that's just one of those things that, that's like one of the quirks of a Jaguar, is it does that, and there's a tone control, which is the same. Again, it seems to suck it, seems to do an awful lot more, so I don't think these are really knobs that you won't have 
you kind of use them between 10 and 8 sort of thing. Once you go below that, it seems to just cut away. Um, same, same with the tone. Um, yep, yeah, so... And then you've got the strangle switch, which uh, so this is both the pickups on, this is the strangle switch on. Which is, the strangle switch is, I'm calling it the strangle switch, it's the high pass filter. I'm not sure, it's probably, it's probably got its own technical term. Um, I find these these are really useful, see if you've got like a humbucker equipped guitar, and you put one of these in it, it makes it sound like a single coil. Whereas these, you can hear, it, it's making these sound really jangly. And then... Who knows what Leo, was, what Leo was thinking when we were designing these things. And then you've got a sort of neck on its own. So just out of interest here, here's the... We're in... This, is, this switch here where you've got it up is rhythm circuit, so that's the lead circuit. Uh, so this is the neck pickup through the rhythm circuit with the volumes up at full. To the, to the lead circuit. Put it into the rhythm circuit. There's something else in there. I thought there was. Because that's the, both the, both these tone, the volume and tone at full, and the volume and tone at full. This is rhythm circuit. There's definitely some. Oh, in fact, there's a cap on the tone control which everything runs through. So I think that might be something to do with it. On some, stick on a wee rhythm track, have a mess about with a Jagger. Okay, I made a mistake there, but what I should be doing, I'm using the lead circuit for doing the rhythm track. Obviously, use the rhythm track. It. Say, think of the lady VC15. I'm using that 3 by 12 cabinet, a Moore drum pedal, which is coming through the bass amp, and uh, a Jam Man loop pedal. No other pedals yet, so it's just clean. It's called the strangle, the strangle one. Switch, uh, turn it back off. Both pickups on. Joyo Overdrive pedal, uh, the Joyo US Dream.
Brett's back up on his own. Rhythm circuit. This one is one you wonder, um, I don't put the reverb on it, never put the reverb on That's it. Maybe it's just the way it looks, but I feel this should be like a sort of surfy type thing, so maybe get the delay on as well, maybe. I've never turned the delay on ever. I don't even know which one the delay is, that one. Because this switch has never been working before, um, a wee bit crackly. Not anymore. It sound like with the fuzz pedal on the, the extreme super fuzz. Um, I quite like this, it's actually a really nice guitar. Um, yeah, but what a difference this is going to make. I don't know how long the, the guy had this guitar, but he said that when he got it, the the 
treble circuit, nope, the blah, 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 lead circuit wasn't working, so it was basically only working with this switch up. So, I mean, now he's got loads and loads of sounds. Um, okay, I think the original idea was that you're meant to have, like, a rhythm and a lead sound, so you'd set this up for, you know, like, strumming. And then for a solo, you'd have a different sound. It makes sense, I suppose. Um, so, I'll go over it again. When you're in up here, you get the rhythm circuit, which is just the neck pickup with a volume and a tone roller here. And there's some sort of cap in there or in the other circuit. And then when you put it down the way, you've got an on switch for each pickup. So if you've got the neck pickup on and then you've got a volume and a tone here. Um, but it does sound different than when you've got the, the neck pickup on in rhythm mode. So there's, there's something in there. There's a capacitor somewhere. I didn't know. Um, I wasn't paying much attention. I'd basically, when I got it to work, it was like, yay! <laughs> um, and then... So you get two pickups. And then the last one is the strangle switch, which I don't know if you ever really use it. Makes it very thin sounding. Which actually might sound really good with uh, loads of distortion. Yes, very nice, very nice. Um, one thing, it's got quite a radiused fingerboard. Um, seeing as I've now I've inv I invested in radius gauges, uh, I can now tell you exactly what the radius is. So I'm going to guess, because it seems quite radiused, I'm going to think this could be a 7.25 um, radius. Um, is it that, that's what the original uh, strats and tellies were. That's what it is. Um, that was right. Yay. Um, the sort of more old fashioned ones. And it's like people like a flatter one because it makes it easier to play solos up here. You can get the action lower. Um, but you're not going to be likely to be playing Steve Vai type bloop, bloop, Yang Wee Malmsteen stuff. My mind you saying that Yang Wee Malmsteen does. I think he does use vintage strats, so he probably does use this uh, radius. Um, but this isn't, that's not what this is designed for. This is for show and for... I want to play the Beach Boys on it, actually. That's what I want to do. I don't know if I can play any Beach Boys songs. You just better play. I can't remember how you play it. You just better play Surfing USA and it was great. Um... Copyright strike for that. Yeah, so lovely guitar. Basically, it's the same quality level as that. It's a. Uh, I assume it's still Fuji Gen building them. Um, um, I, I love the Japanese guitars, and it's the fact that you can actually get actual real Fenders that play like my Arias and my what was that? Antoria, the Ibanez Blazer, the Casio MIDI guitar. That area, okay, that West Tones are Matsumoku, but similar quality levels. Um, they're great. Um, so I'm maybe... <sighs> He's not offered to swap it for anything, basically, but if he had... Yeah. I do like it. It's, it's, it's very nice. There's definitely a jangliness you get. I think it's something to do with, see, there's quite a big distance between the bridge and where the strings terminate. So this thing here, I think, has a sort of overtonesy type thing for when... It j and also the fact it's a slightly shorter scale. But I think, see, because you've got this big extra bit of string here, I think that sort of offsets the fact that it's a shorter scale. So normally, like a, a 
on a strat, you know, the strings basically stop there, or a telly, the strings stop there, whereas in this one they go all the way to here, so I think that alters the tension, so even it is a slightly smaller uh, scale length, I think the strings on it seem a bit right, they may be a, are they a little bit bendy, not really. Anyhow, yes, I would, uh, I would jump at one of these. They look fantastic. They, they sound fantastic. Um, I'm actually, I'm, the only thing I'm really, I'm not concerned about it, but a little bit. This switch was broken, like the wee plastic bit was on. That's not why the guitar wasn't working. But the switch was broken as well, and uh, I kind of took all the plastic bits of the actual wee knob bit of the switch out, super glued it back together again, put it in, and it seems pretty solid. Um, but I'm going to suggest to the owner that he maybe just buys one. I don't think he, I think he only lives 10 minutes away. So if he maybe just buys one anyway, so he's got it in the in the gig bag sort of thing, it's a two minute swap over, it really is a case of two screws to take it out and then two screws to take the switch out and then two wires to swap, the earth wire and the signal from the pickup wire is the only, all that's going on to it. So it's really easy and a five minute job. Um, later on. Rock on, catch you later. <laughs>